Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me in a rather grey and drizzly North Wales and the boy of course, he's down there between the gap looking like some beast of Bodmin that's escaped to Snowdonia. Come on holiday to a, a greyer place than, um, than Bodmin Moor. Um, I'm working on a mountain leader course this week. It's a mountain leader assessment and today is like the security on steep ground day. The day is uh, it's about managing groups in sort of broken, rocky terrain, that kind of thing, without the use of the rope. We do get the rope out at uh, various points to look at how we can use it for emergencies or to stop things becoming an emergency. But in essence, it is a mountain walking qualification. It's not a scrambling or climbing qualification. What I'll do is I'm gonna film bits and pieces throughout the day, uh, see if the weather gets any better as well. And then when I get home and dried off, I'll talk through the bits of footage and, and the theme of the day in terms of the layout of the day, that kind of thing. Um, but also in the context of the mountain leader scheme. And I thought it might be useful for people either going through the scheme already or people who are thinking of signing up to the scheme, just to know a bit more about what this day is about. And like I say, in the context of the whole award as well. So have some footage, join me at the dining table once I've dried off at home. So you do join me in my dining room as promised. Uh, I have dried out because it's quite a few days later now. I got home with the best intentions of, of doing the piece to camera to finish off the video, but I probably sat on the sofa and then never got up. So it didn't get done. Lovely day today here. So I'm just grabbing this video before going outside. But I just wanted to run through, like I said in that other bit, the, the theme of this day. Now, whilst the focus is steep ground, and importantly managing people through steep ground it's important to think about what the ml scheme sort of scope is in that regard it's a mountain walking qualification not a scrambling or climbing qualification so you know we're thinking of broken rocky terrain rather than full-on you know rock faces really that means that grade two scrambles grade three scrambles and obviously rock climbing itself are out of the scope of the scheme right working as a mountaineer and climbing instructor if i'm on grade two terrain i almost certainly have a rope on people I don't like hard and fast rules but almost certainly i will so we're thinking grade one not every grade one okay i think in the latest guidebooks uh bristly ridge for example i always use welsh examples because that's where i'm living but bristly ridge i think that gets a grade one now, it's actually quite hard to manage that as an ML because we're not relying upon the rope. We're carrying a rope for emergency use only or to stop things turning into an emergency. So you've got to think, how can we manage people safely through rocky terrain without a rope? Well, it's going to be using spotting where you've got your hands up, uh, stopping a, a slip turning into a fall and a tumble, basically. So if someone does slip on a rocky step, you can just kind of push them back into the rock live to fight another day, nothing exciting has happened. There's other bits you can do, like pushing people's boots into a hole just to make sure it really stays on something. If it's a little bit slippery or if someone isn't feeling very confident, you can just do those kind of physical supporting things to help them up that short, rocky step. It might be just shepherding, so you're kind of maybe leading the way and you're putting yourself between, you know, uh, a bit where you don't want people to go and sort of just pushing people not physically, just metaphorically, up the way you want them to go. Because we call that shepherding, it's just pushing people the right way. And as an ML, that's what you're doing in that terrain all the time, spotting, shepherding, going back forwards to the front of the group, the back of the group, floating in the middle, route finding, getting them to find the route depends very much on the group themselves. As I say though, we've got that rope, but that's only if either we've made an error, and realistically it probably is us that's made that error. Perhaps we've misjudged our group, we've misjudged the weather, um, we have gone onto something we didn't actually know as well as we should have, so perhaps you've gone onto that North Ridge of Trivan and you've taken a bit of a wrong turn, you've gone onto one of the bits that are much more like grade two scrambling, and you've backed yourself into a bit of a corner. 
then maybe you will use the rope, okay? Most MLs I know, nearly all of them that I know have never used the rope in anger, okay? And that means you've got to practice it a lot because you might go years and years and then suddenly you'll need to use it, so you need to remember those methods. Confidence roping might be a little bit different. That's where someone, maybe they've just slipped over two, two or three times and one too many times, basically. And we're talking there about uh, sort of scree slopes or you know grassy slopes where a slip isn't hasn't actually got much consequence. They're not going to go tumbling off down the mountainside. So we do a thing called confidence roping, whereby we're just giving them some moral support and improving their confidence. Before confidence roping, we might just you know put a hand on their rucksack strap to give them a bit of support that way. We might give them one of our uh, sort of walking sticks, our trekking poles, something just to make them feel a bit more stable and secure on that slope. The rest of your group are all right, okay? It's just this one person perhaps that's had that little, gone into that panic zone for some reason. So that's part of the day, and I've done other videos, I'll link them up there or there, I forget which side it is, on the actual rope work stuff. And uh, I will have flashed up some spotting and some shepherding stuff. But don't forget, during that day, whilst the steep ground is the focus of the day, there will be other bits like navigation, flora, fauna, geology, all those kind of bits. So I thought it was just worth, I've got the map here, just pointing out a couple of things that we go to. So again, excuse the camera uh, being moved around a bit, I'll do my best to sort of point it in the right direction as it squeaks away. Um, I've got to fold it out in the right bit first. Typically it wasn't, you can tell. I don't tend to prepare too much for these videos. I like the idea of just doing, doing them on the hoof a little bit. Keeps me entertained. Um, so what we did on this day is we started up in the sort of the parking by Edward Cottage here and then we just walked in on this path and actually when we got to this corner here that's where I sort of set a little navigation leg. We're going up to here generally and over to the full scribbin up this way but I just want people to pick out a few bits on the way so what we did is we actually went up to the, there's a little, um, what's it called, a spur, just testing you there. Hopefully it's focused enough on that, so it's a bit close for this camera, but there's a little spur there. It's some interesting terrain around there, uh, and there's other features that sort of aren't on the map because they're not breaking that 10 meter line. So we went up to that, and then the next leg was someone to get us up to uh, just where that sort of field boundary, it's a wall in this case, joins the rocky stuff. And from there on up, we sort of put the helmets on, went up, and use the rope in places on the journey. Um, uh, and then once we got over the rocky stuff here, we went back into navigation mode. So I got someone just to lead us up to, there's a ring contour there. And then someone else has a tiny ring contour, which probably won't, won't come out on the, um, the video so well, but not the big one, there's a little one there. And then this is the full scribbling ridge. So once we got to there, maps away again, and up we went route finding, spotting, shepherding, and uh, you know, rope in places, that kind of stuff. And once we've done this, and this takes some time because there's loads of chat, loads of management, loads of weaving around and things. And I don't actually go to the top normally on this day. We got to sort of up by the football pitch somewhere, I call this bit the football pitch, somewhere up here, and I got people to relocate there. Tricky one actually. And then we headed across onto the Gribbin, bit more nav on the way down, bit more spotting, shepherding, that kind of stuff. And then we just came back onto the sort of the top of the Gribbon facet at the end of the day and did a bit more rope work on one of the rocky steps down there. And off we went down uh, back to the cars and everything. So there you go. I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of the day. Do keep in mind, of course, that uh, your day might look nothing like that on your steep ground day. It's probably going to have a general theme much the same. But even if you did it with me, JV Mountain Skills, we're not going to do that exact day. So whilst that might be a nice day to go and practice, even if I did that same loop going up the full scribbin, I'm gonna pick out different navigation points. We might come in via Bocluid or something instead. So don't sort of practice that and, and book on with someone and go, it's gonna be exactly like that. It's just to give you a bit of a theme for it. Now, things I see being done not so well on that day. It tends not to actually be the sort of the rope setup kind of stuff. People tend to get that pretty bang on because it's quite simple, all with just overhands and there's only a few sort of set pieces to learn. What happens, I guess, is people manage them not so well. So they belay someone up a short rocky step 
and then they take that person off belay like right on the edge of a rocky step rather than getting them back to a safer position. So think about the management of those setups rather than getting uh, you know, a bit blasé about it because that's easy to do on an assessment because you're just amongst peers. You haven't got a, a, a sort of a random group to work with. It's other people who are being assessed. So it's easy to think, oh, well, they're really good. It's okay. I can take them off there. Got to play the game a little bit. I sometimes see people put the, the sort of the wrap around their arm for body belay type stuff in the wrong side of the system. So they'll put it on the live rope rather than the breaking strand. So look after the little things. There is a bit of assessment fever sometimes. So just slow, steady. Any decent provider will make your life nice and easy by creating a nice, relaxed atmosphere that's all about learning and, and consolidating more. Uh, of course, you've got to show off those skills. We want to keep learning and stuff. So, you know, it, it is relaxed. The pressure comes from you, and that's just human nature, isn't it? During that day, it's still like, especially like, it's a good chance to chat about geology and stuff like that. So, if you've got some glaciation uh, glaciation knowledge for example share that and I on my assessments that's just an informal chat you drop things in as and when you can think of them rather than 10 minute presentations I just think it's more realistic to see something and chat about it and still drop in the flora the fauna whatever you might see I've seen kites up in that area recently which uh, I never have done uh, until recent times loads of plant life obviously you go past a spot with uh, mountain avian on it, uh, which I only learned the other day, so that's nice. I learned lots on assessments as well. Throughout the day, it's kind of you're leading the legs, so there'll be four people or up to four people. And you take it in turns to lead and, and manage people through and just treat each other. You know, we can all fall off anything. That, that's why I set it up. So still manage people through that terrain. And like I say, you do have to play the game. No one's going to try and catch you out or anything like that. But we're trying to avoid using the rope. You almost certainly will use the rope on that day, of course, because we need to see some stuff happening uh, to sort of you know check you can do it all. But the theme is avoiding the rope. And that's real life as an ML as well. All your ML days, whether they're on rocky ground like Trivan or Kribgark, when the weather allows and you've got the right group and stuff, they're all about avoiding using the rope. If you're thinking, oh, I can go on grade two stuff, because I'm good on grade two kind of stuff because I'm a climber, a mountaineer. I've got this really confident group. They'll be fine on grade two stuff. They might be fine on grade two stuff, but think about how you would manage it if they weren't suddenly fine. They've bitten off a bit more than they can chew. Can you spot it? Can you shepherd it? Or would you need a rope? I think the answer is on that terrain, you'll need a rope to manage it really. Okay, so look on the mountain training website. They explain all this kind of stuff. They don't say you can do this, you can't do that. It's up to you as an ML to make good quality fact-based decisions. Um, but hopefully that's helped a little bit with the sort of the whole context of it all. So please do, as always, fire away with any questions. Uh, I'm happy to answer as best I can. And also do any video requests of things you'd like to hear about and, and see on these on these videos. It's always helpful for me. I've got a big long list, but a uh, long list, but a shorter amount of time to do them in. I'm just so busy with uh, my own work and obviously climbing and stuff as well. But I hope the video has been useful. As always, click the like button, smash the subscribe button, follow us on Insta, follow us on Facebook, use the Buy Me A Coffee link, all the support, as always, massively appreciated. As always, though, thanks very much for watching. More videos coming up very soon.